Starbird. For as long as he could remember, the Moon King had known the story of the legendary Starbird. There was only one Starbird, the beautiful and enchanted creature whose song wove the most magical dreams. The Moon King was overjoyed when he first heard he was to be a father. He wanted to give his daughter the most wonderful gift imaginable. No gold or jewels would be enough. One gift alone would be worthy of the princess, Starbird himself. The journey was long and perilous, but after many months he was rewarded. He had captured the fabled creature. Each evening at dusk, Starbird sang to the princess the purest, sweetest and most enchanting song. She would fall asleep to his beautiful voice, nestled in the treasure of the richest dreams. One day, she noticed a sadness colouring Starbird's voice. Perhaps it had always been there, but she could not bear it. The princess opened the cage door. Go, be free, Starbird. He spread his wings wide with joy. Free at last, Starbird soared higher and higher into the sky, away from the castle and out of sight. When he learnt what the princess had done, the Moon King flew into a rage. How could his beloved daughter reject the gift he had risked so much to bring her? Angrily, he vowed to search the globe until he found Starbird and returned him to the castle. By day, the Moon King slept, and Starbird could fly freely in search of his home. But as day turned to dusk, the first star of the night appeared and warned Starbird to hide before the Moon King awoke. With a flutter of thanks, he swooped down to the jungle world below him. Here, he befriended all the creatures who were enchanted by his songs. As the dark cloak of night descended, the stars and his new jungle friends helped Starbird hide, safe from the Moon King's piercing gaze. But the jungle was not home, and when morning came, Starbird set off once again. He flew so far and low, the land turned liquid. Whoosh! The cold water engulfed him as he entered the underwater wonderland. The sea creatures were fascinated by him, and that night kept him hidden from the omnipresent Moon King. But Starbird knew he did not belong in the sea. When the sun rose, he flew far, until the ocean below turned dry and dusty. In the desert, the heat was strong, but the animals showed him where to find shade and water to drink. As night fell, they clustered under the sprinkling of stars, hiding Starbird in the vast landscape. The next day, Starbird flew higher and higher to where the tops of the mountains scraped the sky and animals lived among the clouds. He reveled in the freshness of the cool air beneath his wings. Surely he would find his home soon. As the sun retired in deep, dark shadows, the mountain creatures told Starbird of a faraway land where the birds sing together and make homes in trees as old as time itself. With hope and happiness in his song, Starbird woke before dawn. Perhaps he didn't notice that the stars were still gently twinkling. Perhaps he didn't see the Moon King hiding in the shadows. As he took flight, the Moon King pounced. Starbird was prisoner once again. The Moon King gleefully returned the caged bird to the castle. But life behind bars was no life at all. Starbird could no longer live this way. He could not eat or drink. He could not even sing. Starbird sat silent in his cage, defeated. The princess dared not defy her father again by opening the cage, 
but she begged the Moon King. Father, Starbird doesn't belong here. Please, he can't sing any more. Nonsense, her father said. He will sing again. But he didn't sing again. As the days passed, Starbird grew thinner and thinner, sadder and sadder. The princess pleaded with her father once again. How can we be so cruel? No one can live life behind bars. Starbird belongs in the sky. Please, father. The Moon King looked at the tears in his daughter's eyes and looked inside the cage once more. The next day, when the princess went to visit Starbird, the cage door was open. A single feather lay on the floor. All that was left to show Starbird was once there. The Moon King embraced his daughter, his face salty with tears. She knew he finally understood.